In the mortal realms, the seas hold many secrets and many terrors. Many millennia ago, cities were lost to the sea, and even the first creation of the god mage Teclas fled to them. Their story has now become a myth to the point many people in the mortal realms have forgotten that they even exist, or believe they are only stories to scare the kids from venturing too far off into the ocean. But they are out there. They don't care about allies or the outside world. They only care to survive and to live on. And when you go and venture into their domain and steal from them, then they will do the same. Because when the land takes, then the sea taketh. Long ago, in the age of myth, Teclis wanting to bring back his fellow elves to the realm, and with his newfound power and the help of the other elven gods that survived the destruction of the world that was, they captured Slanesh, the chaos god that devoured the souls of the elven king and has tormented them since. With his capture, they pulled the tortured souls of the elves and thus the first elves were born known as the Sithai. But Teclis found them to be imperfect, and they were in a way traumatized from being tortured from Slanesh and he deemed them a failed experiment. And when he was about to destroy every Sithai, Tyrion, the twin brother of Teclis, managed to stall him long enough for the Sithai to escape and hide under the seas of the mortal realms. And to this day, they hide in the deepest part of the oceans and only come out to do their soul raids because their kin are often born with diminished souls or no souls at all and they are forced to steal the souls of the land of dwellers in order for their kin to survive and this is where our story begins you see for who in the mortal realms are the most curious and the most obvious to be seekers of trinkets and profit that would be the dwarven of the skies the Caradron Overlords. Because even if the Ogres and the Oryx are known as wild beasts who only love to destroy things, sometimes they stay and live in the cities of Man and Dwarden. For they are a rare sight to see, but they do trade with bone and meat with the humans and sometimes help keep the enemies at bay, since the forces of destruction cannot fight their nature or reeling for the side of battle. So if you ever visit one of these sky ports or trade ports, do not be surprised if you see those green muscled oryx in the streets trading for they are friendly sometimes. Johnson was hired to dive into the oceans to search for some items that belong to the fabled deepkin because they would bring a lot of coin to the ogres. Even though the magical properties are lost to the people of the mortal realms to the deepkin, these items are their lifeline. Johnson joined a group of fishing folk and sported a special made suit to withstand the pressures of the ocean floor. For him, these ruins have been abandoned for eons, and the stories of the Deep Gin are just that, stories. As they arrived to the destination, he dived into the ocean. The suit withstood the pressure of the ocean floor, and alas, he found what he was hired, for he found all the items that he needed and that he was looking for. One of those items was a shard of the Shirelium from the now destroyed Imar descendant enclave. For those of you who are not familiar with what a Shirelium is, this is where the Idanith keep a repository of all the souls they have collected to use for some Idanith born with the curse of a withering soul. For Johnson, this place seemed abandoned and in ruins. Nobody had been there possibly for ages, no signs of anybody. But just because something is un unattended does not mean it is not claimed. But to the Dwarden of the Caradon, such notion is not understood. As he approached the shard and the items, a lone alapex 
approached him in the form of attack. Now he knew that this place was not as abandoned as he thought, but he got his price and left the area. As soon as the boat touched the land, he left towards the skyport of Tobalakaim. But little did he know that he had disturbed something important for one of the Morphon enclave. And now they must get it back. Sadly, the first ones to feel the vengeance of the Deepkin was not Dwarden, but the fishermen that Johnson traveled with. For the Deepkin do not care for the mortal lives of the land dwellers. All they care is to get their precious artifacts back. Just like any attack from the Deepkin, it first starts with a sudden mist, as if the ocean is suddenly flowing, and then, like a tsunami, an attack. For the fishermen, this must have been frightening, suddenly seeing arrows rush through and strike down some of their fellow villagers. Even when the Damardi thralls were struck down, the villagers would witness the unnatural power of the soul renders, bringing back the lives and heal the wounded Namardi thralls. Soul renders are those who are in charge of collecting the souls of their enemies and fallen comrades so they can be used for future deepkin born. The Namardi thralls seem more like they danced and not fought, and were killing without any remorse and no emotion, since these elves were born with no eyes. And when the deed was done and all of the souls needed for the, this raid of vengeance were taken, then now it was time to inquire the last survivor as to where is the trillium that was stolen. The majestic Achillean queen of the Morphan enclave came out of the water and demanded as to who stole the trillium. Far away from this sudden soul raid of the village by the fabled Deepkin, Johnson had no idea what was happening, but he felt it in his dwarden bones. He could feel that the seas was out to get him for what he had stolen. He did not feel comfortable. He had read the old texts that tell the stories of the Deepkin, or the Idaneth as they like to call themselves, a word that in old elvish tongue means extreme seclusion, and that, and that is how they like to keep it. They liked their secret society being hidden, especially from the eyes of the elven god Teclas, who still wishes to this day to destroy them. And the Idaneth will go to extreme length to keep their enclaves a secret, and that means to kill anyone who knows about their existence. And now, Johnson was clearly a target, and he had to move fast, no sleep, no eating, no stopping. He had to get to the skyport a place that is far away from the ocean and the Idanith clearly could not attack but is not even touching the ground. Also, his employer, the ogre thug called Morag, who people knew not to do business with, lived in the skyport in the lower decks where the lowest of the low lived. A place where it's more common to see the oryx, grots, and ogres. Indeed, Toba Lorcaim was a very interesting place where many factions lived and created odd factionalism. When he finally arrived to the skyport, he debated in his mind to either abandon the job or leave and continue with his word. But sadly, his dwarf himself could not allow him to abandon his word. He went to see Morag to get his coin and give away the item he stole. And once he arrived, they proceeded to have a conversation about how exactly he came to know where the fabled city was located. And he says that recently, a rival clan of theirs got into a battle with a ruined ship of Clan Scryer and came into possession of a record of events kept by the clan which told the story of an attack on the fabled city of the Ideneth. After this, Johnson and his crew boarded the rival Skycutter and stole the ledger and translated it himself. But now that he had stolen the treasure and the artifacts from the Ideneth, he did not feel safe and just wanted to leave and he knew that even Morag was in danger. The ogre was not interested in the magical items from the Ideneth. All she wanted was the old stuff, something she can trade and sell. One of the items was in the form of a shell and this was the fabled Shirelium that the Ideneth cared for. But the Dwarden and the ogre did not know the importance of it. But Morag had no interest for it, so she gave it to Johnson. 
after Johnson left, he still felt the sea was following him. Even the smell of seafood made him gag, and the coral was making him uncomfortable. So he was going to go to one of the Jim Smith from the dispossessed Dwarden to get rid of the coral and to get some coin while at it. But as he waited, suddenly something strange started to happen. He was thousands of feet above the sea level, but as he exhaled, transparent bubbles came out of his mouth as if he was underwater and a mist started to come to the town and suddenly he saw it and Alapex swam between the granite columns of the guild hall. Johnson thought he had gone mad. It is not possible that an Alapex is swimming here. Impossible for it but it was true and Alapex was there and the only reason why he survived was because an Endrin master shot the Alapex and it fell to the ground and now suddenly an attack was being witnessed. Everywhere Johnson turned he saw the nightmare, red in powder smoke and charging bodies, elven warriors fl flow down the streets as if a sudden flood tide was sweeping through the city and Alapex knights flied in the streets. Now it was a full battle and a soul raid for the Idanet. From the chaos of the battle, Johnson did not stop to watch. He knew he had to get out of there, for it was him who they were searching, that's for sure. So he ran his way to his own ship, the Fisker, and did not care if they had clearance to leave. He just had to get out of there. He even outlooked the fact that if he had arrived little, a little bit later, his crew would have left him behind to die. But that was a problem for another day. Right now, he had to get out of there. He did not care what the Adonis were doing to the innocent people of the skyport. As he flew out of the port, he looked behind. He could see the flashes of light, flames. He knew he got lucky, but now he had to head to a safer place. Maybe a seer. But as he was going away, he noticed that a giant mass approaching and with all defiance of scientific possibility, there was a leviathan swimming or flying in front of their ship and now they were in a fierce battle and they were being boarded by the Idanet and he knew it was just a matter of time before they too became victims to the Idanet. Eventually Johnson was knocked down but the sea elves did not kill him. Instead they held him and waited for the queen to arrive and they searched Johnson and found what they were looking for, the coral with all the trapped souls inside. And in order to save his life, he says the rest of the stuff he stole are with Morag. But the Queen Elf responds, I care not for trinkets. Things can be replaced. Souls devoured by the Tarsting Prince are forever lost. But how do you respond to that? How do you treat with creatures so alien in their values as the Deepkin? The only other thing she wanted to know was how did he learn about Imar? Quickly, Johnson explained everything that he had previously related to Morag, about the Barag Zone Skycutter, the Skaven Ruin Ship, everything. And with the information, the elves can return to the sweet annihilation of the senses and feel no more. The Soul Reaver lowered his scythe-like weapon, the light globe swinging from his head emitting a curious pull on Johnson's attention as Johnson begged for his life, but the Soul Reaver responds in a very alien way. You Dwarden are long lived. Your soul will be highly prized and it will bring joy of a kind to the parent of an Amarty who will otherwise wither in childhood and perish, said the Soul Reaver, hidden within the totality of the luring light. And then Johnson only saw blackness. But just remember this, because to the Idanet, you are not the fishing folk or the predators of the sea creatures. To the Idanet, you are the fish. And that, folks, is the moral of the story, that just remember, in the ocean there's more dangerous stuff than just the sea creatures. The Idanets are out there, but hopefully 
you guys liked this story. Hopefully you liked the way I narrated things. Um, if you did like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you get to comment a little bit below what you like, what you didn't like. And hopefully you get to subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.